In this video, I'm going to talk about some differences between classic JavaScript functions and the new JavaScript ES6, ES2015 uh, era functions. So the first thing I want to talk about is names. So functions traditionally had names. Uh, we're going to look at this. So let's say we have a function f. I'm going to assign it to f, but I'm going to uh, define it as function hello and I'll do console.log hello world and then if I do console.log f.name what we should see here is hello not f Although f is the variable we assign it to, we actually named this function here. Um, however, if we define an error function, like so, the question will be, what is the name that we get? And the name is just a so we get the name as the variable not not that it actually has a name itself because error functions are all anonymous so let's look at one more thing and I'm actually going to create a new file called arrows 2 and this next thing that we're going to look at is the arguments keyword so the arguments keyword it's just a, a keyword that's always available in JavaScript and it shows you the the scope or it shows you the um, the arguments that were passed into the function in the current scope so if we run node arrows 2 these are the arguments passed to the node application itself so this this makes sense because we're actually we're running this uh, file name in node um, whereas if we were to say have a function so let's have a function and I'll call it test and then what I'm gonna do here is console.log uh, the keyword arguments um, and if I call test and if I call it with a couple of, let's say true one test, right? So these are three arguments I'm passing to it. And if I call test, I'm going to see those arguments printed out. So there we have it. We have true one and test. Those are the arguments that were, I'll zoom in here a little bit. These are the arguments that were actually passed into that function. And this is just a feature of JavaScript. Uh, no matter what the definition of the function says, you can always pass as many arguments as you want to it. However, if we were to make this an arrow function, so we'll say const test uh, equals, and that's now an arrow function declaration, what will happen here? So you can see the arguments is just what was passed into the file. So this is the parent scope of arguments. So now arguments doesn't really apply anymore when you're talking about a uh, lambda function, or a, sorry, an arrow function. So let's open up another file. I'm actually gonna save this. Uh, call it arrows three and what we're going to do in this file is kind of show how the this context is different. So what we'll do is we'll say here's a function and I'll call it animal. I'll have I'll pass it some params. And what I'll do is I'll say this.type equals params.type and I'll say this dot voice equals params dot 
voice. And this is just going to be kind of a goofy example, but I'm going to show the difference between how the this context changes. So we'll say set timeout function. Uh, and what we're going to do is have a timeout of five milliseconds here. And it's going to say console.log. And then here I'm going to use um, the new ES6 template strings. And I'll say classic funk and we'll do this dot type says this dot voice okay and then I'll do another set timeout down here and I'll say this is a lambda function. We're going to do 10 milliseconds, so this should happen right after the other one. And I'll do console.log. Again, I'll do the string templates. So we'll say arrow func. And we'll do this dot type uh, says this dot voice. And finally, I'm going to create a new um, little object here called duck. And it'll be a new animal. I'm going to pass params. And the type is going to be duck. And the voice is going to be quack. So silly example. But the point is, when I create this object, it's going to set the timeouts here, and we're going to see the context of this here. So I'm getting a warning that duck is not is defined but never used, which is fine, because the set timeouts are going to fire immediately. So let's go ahead and run node arrows 3. And you're going to see the classic function, the this is lost because it creates a new this for the function. So the context is, it's a new context. Whereas the arrow function here, we always get the context of the parent. So arrow functions are really nice in certain circumstances when you're doing things inside of a class or inside of another object. And you don't have to do that uh, hacky thing that people used to do where they'll say like var self equals this or var underscore this equals this or under or var that equals this. Um, now you can just use error functions and you keep your this context of what you thought it should be. So those are kind of three different examples of how error functions are just a little bit different than classic JavaScript functions.